praise the Lord. We warmly welcome you to our program, Davar, the Word of Promise. And today it's time for us to take you through the scripture readings and Holy Mass readings meant for the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. My dear brothers and sisters, the feast day of the Most Holy Trinity lets us understand the Trinitarian aspect of our one God who exists in three distinct persons. We have one God who exists in three divine persons who is co-equal, co-eternal and consubstantial. And therefore, there is so much to learn about this mystery of one God in three persons. So therefore, uh, to enrich us and take us through the uh, scripture readings meant for today, we have invited to our studio Reverend Father Lalit Felix, who is the parish priest of the Ragama Church. We welcome you, Father. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Father. So today as we begin our discussion, today also I invite you to suggest a general theme based on the liturgy of the word said for today. As we celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, the liturgy of the word is based on the mystery of the Trinity. So I say it is a mystery because with our human understanding, with our all the human wisdom and knowledge, we can explain it to some extent and uh, there is also mysterious aspects in this truth in the Holy Trinity because there is one God in this one God there are three persons God the Creator God the Redeemer God the Holy Spirit, the life giver. But these three persons are one and the scripture speaks what this unity among them as they are basically of love and they are equal. They are really in the three aspects fulfills and fills the church as creative, as redemptive, and as life-giving. So that's how the three persons work in as one God in the church and in the lives of the faithful. Thank you very much, Father, for that beautiful briefing about the Trinitarian aspect of our one God. So uh, we speak further about the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit uh, in time to come as we go through scripture. So I think it's time for us to move to the first reading in order to get a better understanding. The first reading for today is taken from the book of Exodus chapter 34 verse 4 to 6, 8 to 9. Early in the morning Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. So, Father, when we take uh, today's first reading, we see how God reveals himself to Moses. And even he uh, reveals his name to Moses. He calls himself the Lord and 
right now I just invite you to give us a background to this context and what this passage really led to. Uh, if you could just explain to us. So this is after uh, while they were on journey at Mount Sinai where Moses was asked to come to the peak of the Mount Sinai where he met the Lord in the cloud. Now I explained once also the Lord usually comes to our presence in the Old Testament in many ways. So in the Mount Sinai itself as uh, the Lord with fire. Then uh, Moses as he climbed the mountain he found a fire and God said it is I come closer to me. Now here also it is in the cloud that he speaks. And he speaks and gives or gives his name to Moses. I am the Lord. Now the Lord means uh, the person who has all authority on any person. Now when a slave is there in the Old Testament context, the slave has no right for anything. For his life is on the hand of the Lord. Now as the Lord says, I am the Lord. So to Moses he says, I am the all authority on your own people and on you. And then he says, presenting himself his own characteristics. That's the very important thing to see. As the Lord in the Old Testament, he says, I am a merciful, gracious God. So first thing is, he is mercy, compassion. So though he is the Lord, there is fullness of mercy and compassion in your God. That's what he says. He reveals that. And he says, slow to anger. And he says to Moses, now I am full of mercy and compassion. And also I do not get angry at once. No, I am very slow in my anger. But I am rich in kindness and fidelity. So his richness in his own kindness. And then own fidelity. What is this? Now, he is always, always faithful to any promise he gives. So, he is always faithful. So, he is not who breaks a promise. So, he says that, and I have this kindness, gentleness in myself for you. So, this is where God reveals himself. As God reveals, then Moses makes some uh, requests. There are three requests from the part of Mo uh, Moses. Then he said, it says, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. Do come along in our company. So they were moving. Mm. So they were asking, in our journey, God, be with us. You always be present with us. So your kindness is there. You are always faithful and your mercy is there. For thus, move with us, come with us right through our journey. So his request is first one that. And then he says, he accepts the stubbornness of his people. That's why he says, this is indeed a stiff-necked people. So they are very stubborn. Sometimes they sing. But for their wickedness on sin, pardon. So he asks for forgiveness from the Lord. Forgiveness. So my people, they are really hard. Sometimes they accept that you are as the Lord and 
as soon as acceptance is done, again they have gone away the from you. That's type of a people. So yet they come for forgiveness. So Lord, as you are mercy and compassion, please pardon our people. Then he asked the other thing, receive us as your own. Uh, it means uh, make us your own heritage, your own people as we belong to you. So here we find God reveals and he is God of kindness, compassion, God who is faithful, full of fidelity, rich in kindness and from the part of Moses, from God who is rich in mercy, asking, yes, you always be with us. We want you. We really want you in our journey. We want your forgiveness. We want you to have us as your own, as your heritage. Now, this is where we really should feel within our own Christian life too. When we believe in the Lord, God, the Creator, the Father, and we know in our own experience that He is God of mercy and everything, right to our journey may be our personal life. So sometimes we are married in our married life. We are in a family, in our family life. So we are religious sometimes in our religious life. We are priests in our priestly life. So whatever the vocation of the life we live, we always look for or ask for God's presence within us in our journey right through towards the kingdom. And also, though we say we are a good people, we are also, when we find the satisfaction in the flesh or a need of many things sometimes, put ourselves in the worldly matters, put ourselves in our own flesh and get away. So in those places where we look for the mercy of God and always keep in our life, Lord, make us your own. We like to be your own people. We belong to you. And in your mercy, in your love, in your fidelity, make us your own or otherwise make us your own heritage so that we always find that you are with us and we are yours. Yes, very, thank you very much, Father, for that in-depth explanation. I think uh, as people of God, first and foremost, we had to understand who God is, as you just uh, expressed, uh, because we need to know that the Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and He is faithful to us. So with that, uh, there's another question that I have to raise here. Now, it is uh, Moses' plea here. Moses is asking God uh, to come along in their company. Then again, he asks uh, God to pardon the wickedness of his people and also receive them as his own. So when it comes to us living in the present times, how does this apply to us? Could you say uh, something connecting to this to our viewers watching this program today? How could we relate to this? Now, here we find from the part of Moses, he doesn't ask anything for his own personal life. As the leader, he presents his own people. So he mediates for his own people. So as we believe in God, the Father who is faithful, we must also be people who really mediate for the others because in our baptism we say we are a priestly people. So when we say we are a priestly people, so it's a function of a priest. So now as I am officially a priest where I am supposed to offer sacrifice, mass, the administer sacraments, all that. But before that in my baptism, I have received the priestly function in that 
I have to pray for others. I have to bring the needs of the others. I have to bring the needs of the church and mediate before God for the church, for my family. Likewise, so we, where we are to mediators, we have to intercede for us like Moses. So today, some many times, people are always asking things for their own personal life, sometimes for the family, uh, for their own personal family. But we sometimes rarely come to intercede for the necessities of needs of the church or the people or the parish uh, where we live. So today it is a need as Moses intercede for his people. We have to intercede for our country very specially. As we are going through a financial crisis, as we go through environmental crisis in our country, and also ethical crisis. So even if the values, there is a vast decadence. So in that fall, the country, the people are to be raised. So only the salvation for these people, it is through our mediation. And we have to say our people, sometimes they are so sinful. As Moses said, this is indeed a stiff-necked people. So when we present our situations, our people as it is, God knows that I present my own country, my own people as they are. And I ask him to have forgiveness on them, to give them newness in the life, so that they will find that you are going with our country, you are going with our people, and you are raising our people, and you are really faithful in your promises to give us the life, the prosperity, the development, the morals, and everything need for a good human family, good human nation. Yes, Father. Uh, very rich and uh, very enlightening. I think with that, uh, it's time for us to move to the responsorial psalm. <laughs> the responsorial psalm is taken from Daniel chapter 3, verse 52, 53. 54, 55, and 56. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Father, when we take this verse, this expresses how worthy our God is and how He should be praised and he, how He should be glorified. If you could just comment on this aspect. So as we take the God, that you believe in, and we believe in. So this God is a powerful God, a loving and merciful God. Therefore, right through our life, even in the life of the Jews, they always praise and gave glory to the name of the Lord. It is there, so because in the Old Testament, the concept of the Holy Spirit 
and the Son of God is very, very limited. But the true living one God is fully manifested and shown. So therefore, this Lord's name, his presence is to be appreciated, is to be glorified and we have to give praise to his name uh, forever. That's what said, always we are supposed. Now here, as you listen, blessed are you, O Lord God of our fathers. Now in the Old Testament, we find from Abraham onwards, God has given fathers and through them, new people is formed. And he really build up a nation for him from Abraham himself. Thus, from that moment onwards, even to the bringing of the, or the building of the temple, because earlier there is no temple, so with the fathers they were going ahead, but uh, with Solomon we got into the temple. Uh, King Solomon built it, and the temple where the presence of God is given, his mighty presence is adored. So, he says, now the people says, or Daniel says, right through, we should praise this holy person, God, the Lord. Now, he is the God of our fathers, and the name is for glorious, and then say, in his temple, his glory is present, and in the temple, his throne is there. Therefore, we, from our depth, we have to give glory and we have to give praise. So, Anishi, it is that even now today, right through our journey of life, we live with God and God is moving with us. Uh, not uh, as in the Old Testament sense. Now, God in the Trinitarian aspect, really present in our present church, in our Catholic life. So, our duty is always to give glory to this Lord for He is present in everything and He moves with us. And then as we really ask the intercession, His powerful coming into our own aid, then we should ask for that but also we should praise and give glory to his name as he is God of mercy and compassion and rich in kindness and fidelity. Yes, Father. So as you say, our Christian life or our Catholic life is a journey or it's an expedition. So on this journey, uh, the scripture further says, uh, the Lord is exalted above all forever. So, when it comes to us living in the present times, how do we revere this God? How do we praise and honor and glorify Him? Uh, how do we respond to this request or this invitation? If you could just uh, explain to our viewers. So, we have a few ways of giving Him glory. First thing is our own personal as well as community prayer. When we get into our community prayer, we together, he says, Jesus said, when one or two, two or many together in praying and together in my name for prayer, I am present. Now, in this presence of the Lord Jesus, we can really give our glory and our praise as a community. So, in prayer. Then, it is community prayer. Then in our personal life, we experience Him because He is in our journey. So as we pray in our personal, in personal way, we should give praise as well as glory to Him with words. Then the other way is, there are hymns and songs. So in the Catholic Church, we have hymns and songs. And these are Catholic hymns and songs of praise. So, we can make use of it with music, without music or whatever and we can really give praise to Him. Thirdly, 
there is also in the Bible, we have Psalms, then also we have some scripture passages where it gives glory. So we can chant the Psalms, we can or read the Psalm, and also some scripture passages, we can read it, and with that, we offer our praise and glory to Him. So we have a few ways of get really getting into our praise and giving glory, and we say it is praise and worship, as well as uh, giving our thanks to Him, all that mixed together. So we as people always should learn it because uh, we say if some we help somebody we really appreciate if he says thank you if he says if he really appreciates so as we are moving with the lord so praise and worship is there giving glory is there to appreciate what god is for me and what he does for me and uh, it comes deep within so that uh, in my own uh, heart, mind, body and spirit I put myself and offer praise to him. Therefore, it is of full person appreciating and thanking the Lord the giving praise means that and make use of our own words the Catholic hymns and songs, as well as the scriptures, psalms as well, we use it and we give glory to Him. Yes, Father. So as you said, even at Holy Mass, we say it is truly mm -hmm. right and just to glorify mm -hmm. and honor Him and uh, revere Him. So with that, I think it's time for us to move to the second reading. The second reading. The second reading is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11 to 13. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Father, when we go through this second reading taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, uh, we come across this great invitation where we are invited to rejoice. So, and it also says uh, how we should promote peace. If you could just explain to us about this context, Father. Yeah, now the second reading is the end of the second letter of uh, St. Paul to Corinthians. Now there, if you take the first part, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. Now with this, First, the community is called to live in harmony because now in the Christian living, we have different people. We have people with different talents and uh, with different stages of life. And with all that, we find some people, they are courageous, some people are very weak, they are sometimes afraid of going ahead or living the life in the demands. There, St. Paul really asked this community, people of this community, to encourage one another. So, help and giving courage to the people to live their Christianity in the situation that they are. Because usually we live in the world. So in the world means the situation where we are. So we, as we are in Sri Lanka, our situation is different, living the faith, and another country it is different. So there is a difference. 
So now in the uh, community of the Corinth, uh, St. Paul really finds that there is a need for encouragement from one another to live the faith. And there is also a need of being happy of being a Christian. That's why he says, brothers and sisters, rejoice. So being a Christian, we must be happy. We should have the joy of being a Christian. Uh, it's not, uh, why should I become a Christian? What to do? Uh, this is there today uh, with these young people sometimes. And there is a need because sometimes the parents, they are interested. Uh, this is what I experienced in one of the parishes where I served. Parents were really interested in putting a child to a Catholic school and giving Catholic formation. So when they were going uh, away from the Catholic way of living when we question, they say sometimes, Father, it was the parents who wanted us to be in the Catholic schools. It is not we. So now our way is different. We go somewhere else. So it happens because the encouragement and joy of being uh, Catholic is not giving from the family itself. So school is presented, but from the family, the joy of being a Catholic and also uh, encouragement for living a life of a Catholic is not given. So once it is given, there is peace in a family. There is peace in uh, wherever they are because they know how to accept the others and how to live and how to witness also without hurting others. So this is necessary. That's why he says that. Then there is one uh, uh, sentence very important. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Yes. Uh, greet one another with a holy kiss. Now, Kiss can be presented in many ways. It, is, it may be a kiss arousing the senses or making sensual expression. Then sometimes a kiss for love. Now, holy kiss means it's a love, agape expression that doesn't have anything to go with the sensual part senses, but it expresses that the person that I kiss is a creature of God. He is love, a love of God. So that kiss means the acceptance of the person totally and also giving blessing for this person with the whole of personality. It's a blessing. So it is not curse, it is not a rousing matter, it is a blessing of love. So St. Paul really says, as we live in these communities, as we live in our own society, as we live wherever we are, so we should be able to give that holy kiss, holiness, a love of agape, so that the joy will really be in the community. So that's where he just, before departing, give the concept of being together. But as he comes to the end, you will find the Trinitarian aspect of the blessing. Or Trinitarian blessing that he gives to the community. Now, this you really get in the Holy Mass at the very beginning. So, the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you get at the very beginning, the Trinitarian greeting at the Mass. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So now, here, at the very end, he gives to this community the Trinitarian blessing. Mm -hmm. So, that is where we are. We, our concept is, uh, our God is 
Trinity. Our God is Trinity. One God in three persons. So, here you find the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why does the using of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because with the death and the resurrection of the Lord, he brought about fullness of grace for all of the humanity. Fullness of the grace. So at the Holy Mass, we receive all the, there is fullness of grace. So this fullness of grace is through Jesus. And then God, the Father, is love. So God is love, we say. So God is love. So then the blessing of the love of God. And then it is the Holy Spirit who unifies. So he said the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So he is the one who unifies everybody to one body of Christ giving the presence and giving all, bringing all the past together, all human beings together to one body, uh, he brings about the fellowship. So the fellowship the Holy Spirit gives, the love that God gives, the Father, and the graces that Jesus, the Redeemer, gives, be with you all. So that blessing he expresses to all of the community. So now, St. Paul, in the letter, second letter to the Corinthians, really expresses the Trinitarian work in the mission of the church. And that blessing he gives or sends to all people in the Corinth. And likewise today, it's the blessing for all. That's why we at the Mass, at the very beginning, says, uh, the priest says this part and you say and with your spirit uh, that means the same uh, trinity in blessing be with the priest also yes father so this trinitarian blessing is very familiar to us because we hear it oh. all the time at mass the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with all of you so thank you for explaining to us in depth about this Trinitarian blessing. And uh, you also mentioned about that holy kiss, uh, which really uh, shows acceptance of a person and which promotes unity and peace and harmony. Uh, uh, so with that, I think it's time for us to move to the Gospel. Uh, the Gospel is taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 6 to 18. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Yes, Father. So when we take this uh, gospel passage from uh, Gospel of John, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, it further says about the mighty love of God this unfathomable love of God because God the Father was willing to sacrifice the Son uh, that we may be saved so that we will have eternal life. So if you could just touch on that matter for us. Yeah. So as we are in the Trinity Sunday, so first reading spoke of God, the Father, how He is. Then uh, as we come to the Gospel, it speaks of the gift the Father gave to all humanity. The gift is His only Son. His only Son. So His only Son, Jesus was given to the world. 
why he is given? It is not to condemn the world. So sometimes, you know, some people, they send all the people, all their delegation uh, to have investigations. And in that investigations, who are to be culpable and who are to be freed. And there, are, there will be people who are to be culpable as well as to be freed. Or sometimes all are guilty, so they say they are to be punished. Now, this is not that sort of thing. So, why he has given his son, not to condemn, but to raise all these to life. So, he has given his own son. So, he has given him so that he offer himself. So, God, the father expected him the son to offer himself for all humanity and in that offering of his own life on the cross by death and by resurrection he wanted to raise all humanity to the eternal life the fullness of life the life eternal now this is the gift father gave and it shows the, there is the second person in the Trinity. He is the Son of God. He is Jesus Christ. He is Redeemer. So that now I just explained it uh, in the knowledge way. Uh, the, in the knowledgeable way, of, uh, what we say, in the catechism we say, the Son of God is the Redeemer. Uh, he is God and uh, he is sent by the Father. So this is there, even in our creed. We believe that. So that creed is there given to us. Then his uh, practicality is given again. Now to the extent that we believe in the Son of God, the Son God gave for eternal life, naturally as we believe, uh, we receive the life. We come to the relationship with the God for eternal life. But if we do not believe, it is not that God condemn, but he himself or she herself get herself condemned. Because the person doesn't want to have the life for himself through Jesus. Because in the uh, New Testament, the salvation is always through the Son, Jesus Christ. The grace is always through the Son. That's where it is. That's why our own prayers uh, in the Catholic sense are ended in a way present to Jesus Christ. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because through the Son, the salvation, the grace is given and St. Paul says Christ is the only mediator, only mediator because he is the son and son really raised us for, raised us for life. Therefore, the blessings are there through the son. Yes, Father, as you just explained and as the scripture passage further expresses it is vital that one accepts Jesus Christ as the Son of God and in order to be saved uh, so without which uh, this person cannot be saved so is there anything else that you have to add to this or uh, yeah we should really see that our Christian faith is really based on the Trinity Father Son and the Holy Spirit sometimes we find Many people, they speak of God as the Lord only. When you take oh, Yehovah witnesses as such, they are just with that. Then sometimes, some people, they speak of the Redeemer, Christ only. Then some people, they, like some Pentecostals, they say, Holy Spirit only. So in the Catholic Church, we baptize people in the name of the Trinity. 
Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So our faith is in the Holy Trinity. So therefore we begin any prayer with the sign of the cross, the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It is because that's the greatest faith and the mystery in our faith. And then we look for many things from one God, from one God. Redeemer, God the Son is the Redeemer, God the Father the Creator, God the Holy Spirit the Life Giver. So that way they and they are united. They are one. The oneness is always there. So different three persons in different functions but one. So this is the deep faith that we have. And again in our life, as the Trinity is one, we are also, we have the faith in the Trinity and also we should become one in the church. So differences are there. Uh, so we are different as people, male and female, elderly people, then old people, youth, adolescents, children, infants, all that is there, but we are one. We are one. So unity in our life is also very much important and our oneness we should also accept in living our Christian faith. Yes, Father. Thank you very much for enlightening us and imparting this biblical faith into our lives. Thank you very much once again, Father. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My dear brothers and sisters, so may we preserve this unity just as Father said, uh, on this very feast day of the Most Holy Trinity, may we remember that our God is one. Although there are three persons in the Holy Trinity, our God is one. And therefore, may we unite as a church and as uh, God's children. So with that, uh, we, bless, uh, we wish you a, a, a very happy solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. We wish to See you next week. Until then, stay safe and God bless you.